Saints Row used to be a gangbang simulator, or like a gangbanger simulator. Gangbangs are something else entirely. But now, Saints Row is about dumpster diving. That's my character! I'm the trash man! And starting a youth group for your church. Let's get that blood of Christ flowing. Let's go, guys. Which is fun. Wow. There's so many issues with this game. It's Saints Row, so it's supposed to be about creating a criminal organization, but because Saints Row is now Saints Woke, it seems more like I'm starting an after-school club. And of course, our after-school club is multicultural and heavily inclusive. Except for people in wheelchairs. F people in wheelchairs. Is what the Saints think. Not me. I like people in wheelchairs. You want to kill me? Bring it on, bitch! And this is proven by their hideout not being handicap accessible. This whole game feels like a parody on what it's like being a millennial. A lazy f***ing millennial. Yeah, paying rent sucks. And adulting, am I right? God, I love the word adulting. While also murdering tons of cops and other various gang members. Are you ready to die, bitch? Which, yeah, that is kind of the typical millennial lifestyle here in America. But I could forgive all this if the gameplay was good. And unfortunately, it is not. So in this video, we're going to talk about why this game sucks. But first, we're going to go over everything that's good about the game. Really good. So, while playing a game, I like to take notes on things that I thought were good and things that I thought were bad. I do that to make writing the video easier, and this so happened to be one of those games where the list of good things is very short. So instead of writing this part, we're just gonna take a little look at some of the notes I took on this game. First up, I put, uh, guns feel fun to shoot. Now, I don't agree with this. Sure, I wrote it, and maybe at first they feel fun, but once you get more used to the shooting mechanics, it's wildly unbalanced, to where my pistol feels stronger than a full-blown RPG. But more on that later. Next, I wrote, more customization than cyberpunk. This is true, this one's true. There's a shit ton of customization options. Oh my god, I love your hair! Unfortunately though, the game still loses points here. The garage that you have to modify cars in is foggier than a goddamn hookah lounge. Did you just blow that on me? Which kind of makes this whole experience not as good as it should be. This next one's kind of funny. I put, car has more weight than the sun. Driving is fun. Yeah, I also don't agree with this. At first it seemed fun, but the more you drive around, the more it starts to feel like you're just puppeting a digital model that looks like a car. It's not very natural at all. And I like big naturals. Oh, we want her to be more bosomy. So I wasn't a fan of this. I also have the LARP missions were fun. And yeah, I still agree with this. The king is unprotected. I shall approach him from the rear. But when I wrote this, I didn't know how many of them I would have to play. Which turns out, was a whole lot. Uh... So they're not exciting anymore. I had to do it too much. And lastly, I have, my car looks like a Rocket League car. Yes it does. Look how badass it looks. Tell me I'm good at designing things in the comments, or I'll have you arrested. But yeah, that about does it for all the good. So now, let's take a look at some things that sucked. Oh brother, this guy stinks! The first thing I obviously noticed was the graphics, because I was looking at them. And sometimes they can actually look relatively good, but a lot of the time, it almost looks like a PlayStation 2 game. You aren't a kid anymore. I mean, like, just look at this cat. <laughs> what the f***? Come on, guys. I also had an issue with how many things were popping up on the screen. I am far too ADD for a bunch of stuff popping up on the screen, okay? I felt like I was in a Japanese game show, but that's probably more of a personal problem. Aside from the graphics, I really didn't care for how the game felt. I don't know why, but the camera placement just seemed kind of off to me. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. It didn't seem like it was in the right spot for a third-person shooter. That, coupled with the fact that there's no cover system, made gunfights excruciating. You can't even crouch. Okay, well, no, you can crouch, but the button for it is on the d-pad so at that point it doesn't really even exist to me i'm never gonna hit the d-pad in a firefight i don't know i thought it was a stupid button placement so i protested it by just not even using it get f***ed, devs <laughs> losers i briefly talked before on how guns don't really feel balanced so far i've had the most success with either my pistol or a pickaxe this is a plastic minecraft pickaxe and i'm not leaving until i find a real diamond yeah i know right a pickaxe 
but the pickaxe is actually a really good time. It felt great to just jump into a huge crowd of people flailing that thing around like an alcoholic gymnast. Which is really special to me because when I was a kid, I really wanted to grow up to be an alcoholic gymnast. Buy me a case of Miller Lite and I'll show you some sick cartwheels. I used the pistol most of the time though because it was by far the strongest gun I had. Weird. RPGs and grenades felt weak and pointless, and if you don't like a couple of the guns, you're kinda screwed. Because there isn't all that many options. You can customize them, and that's kind of cool, but you can't even really see your customizations. Unless you paint your gun pink and make it look like a water gun, most of the details are too small to notice. Holy shit, is that a water gun? My god, man! So I think they kind of took the wrong move here. They should have included more guns and maybe dialed back on the customization options. That's just my opinion. Another thing the development team could have benefited from was taking the time to understand physics and objects and how they exist in the natural world. There's so many surfaces in this game that you just can't shoot through. Now, I can understand a few instances of this. Actually, no, wait, f that. This is bad game design. Just fix it. Don't do that. That's a stupid thing to do. Also, I spent 65K on a jacket while I was drunk shopping in the game. Why, why make a leather duster $65,000? At least the NPCs now think I'm hot. Hey, I think you're really cool. I like you a lot. And that's all I've ever wanted, so. Big W there. Speaking of things I want in life, one of them is a good fast travel system. And thankfully, Saints Rose is the best. It's not, I'm just kidding. Of course it's not. Have you heard everything else I've said? There's no quick way to travel with the cool car that you spent a bunch of money on making. So if you want to actually use any of your modified vehicles, you need to visit a garage. Now, this isn't the worst thing, but one of the most frustrating parts about this is where the game draws the line of realism. If you flip your car, there's no easy way to flip it back over. Even Grand Theft Auto V, one of the most realistic titles to ever release, gives you an easy way to flip your car. Cause the devs actually took a second to think about it and were like, oh, you know, maybe it'd be more fun if every time their car flipped over, it wasn't game over for that car. Cause the devs understood getting stuck sucks. Oh no, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, Saints Row, a game that prides itself on stupid bullshit, won't let me flip my car back over. Yeah, I'm not the best at driving, so this one really annoyed me. Another dumbass thing that cars do is rubber band. No matter how fast my car is, the cops can keep up. Now, a little bit of rubber banding is okay. In all honesty, it makes car chases a little bit more fun and exciting. But if I'm breaking the sound barrier in my Rocket League boost car, Why are we going so fast? A cop in an SUV should not be keeping up with me. That is inexcusable, and I will poop in your coffee if you keep this shit up. Random game dev employee that I'm talking to. Okay, so by now we're at the worst part. The terrible shitty story. The whole story just feels weird and radically unbelievable. LOL, right? Complaining about realism in a Saints Row game? I must be a f***ing moron. Well, I'm not. Hear me out. Every character in this game sucks ass. You have the nerdy character, the cool Chad, and the kinda shy hot girl. And don't forget, I played this entire game and I don't even remember their names. But I'm pretty sure shirtless Mark Rober's name was Kev. It's your boy Mark Robot here, and I just illegally bought a human being and Kevin, something like that. You know those stupid corporate social media posts and ads where they're trying to make their product look cool with like memes and other trendy shit and appealing to youth or whatever? This game is the video game equivalent of that kind of thing. How do you do, fellow kids? There's no actual personality to it other than referencing recent pop culture. And because I'm sure that you're probably not gonna play this game at this point, let's just spoil the whole story. And don't worry, it doesn't take long. Okay, so you start off as a soldier for like a private military company named Marshall. And in the first mission, you arrest this muchacho. Make sure you remember this guy. He's important because he stabs you later. Well, let's go. Oh. I just put a spoiler inside of a spoiler. Innovation, you're welcome. So you have three friends in this game. Shirtless man who hangs out with the Neon Gang, 
Neon Gang is a bunch of IT workers that hate the government or something like that. I don't know. Nerd Man, who is just geeky, I guess. He's just kind of a geek. You're wearing a f***ing bow tie. <sighs> okay. And Quiet Girl. Quiet Hot Girl? We're just gonna actually call her Girl. Yeah, that's the best I can do. And Girl is friends with the Hot Rod Gang, which is the other faction in the game, and they just like cars. That is the only notable thing about that entire gang. So we have friends and enemies. The first mission is robbing a payday loans so you can pay rent and your student loans. Hashtag millennials, am I right? God, that's fucking stupid. But anyways, you do a couple more missions, you get fired from your job at Marshall, and you do some dirty work for other gangs, and then you and all your friends are like, oh, hey, screw the other gangs, let's just make our own street gang. And so you make a street gang, just like that. Easy peasy, right? Isn't that obvious? We're starting a criminal empire. What? But you run your gang as if it were a startup tech company, mainly because a nerd guy. And at this point, you begin taking over businesses in the city. But because we're still broke, we need to rob a train. And to do so, we hit up that guy that we arrested in the first mission, Muchacho. Now, don't forget, you got to remember that guy. He's going to stab us soon. Well, let's go. Oh, just making sure you're paying attention. Also, his name isn't Muchacho, but he's exactly what I think of when I hear that word. And it turns out Muchacho means young man, which he still looks kind of young to me. So I'm right. Don't bitch at me. But after we rob the train, we hold some sort of big gang speech where we're like, oh yeah, the saints are the best, we're gonna be around forever, yeah. Who messes with the saints? No one! And then right after that, a lawyer from Marshall tells us that Marshall now owns the saints because of legal contract stuff, whatever. But that's fine because we make a deal with a witch and end up killing a high-powered CEO in the middle of a board meeting. Looks like you're all out of lawyers. And no one really gives a f corporate America, I guess. I, I don't know, whatever. And to celebrate our victory, we throw a party. And one of the people we invite is the muchacho that helped us rob the train. And holy shit, oh my God, he stabs us? Well, let's go. Oh. <gasps> what? That's so crazy. That's a big plot twist. After that, he buries us. And then we have to beat a board game because that's exactly what happens when you die. It's all just a board game. The afterlife is fake. But after we resurrect, we realize that Muchacho shot up the party and kidnapped your friends, where he's now forcing them to play house while acting like you in a custom-built stage to look like your old apartment. What the f*** is that? How, how did you guys write that? How is that real? Multiple people agreed on that story idea. Think about that. So you kill all his friends and show up to save your friends. And after a long drawn out fight, you kill him in a good old fashioned duel. I shit you not, I grabbed the cutscenes for this part of the video from another channel called Game Clips. And in their footage, the final scene glitches out and Muchacho isn't even there to shoot at. Which is kind of the perfect summary for this game if you really think about it. Saints Row was one of my favorite games as a kid. It was like GTA, but on mushrooms. It focused on providing silly, wacky violence, and although the modern Saints Row still exhibits some of these rooted characteristics, it all just feels cringe now. And because the gameplay isn't polished or fun to back up the lame story and characters, the game ends up being as dry as the desert town it's based in. Yeah, it's actually probably drier than your girlfriend's v What a great video. <laughs>